Did you know that you may be able to use your Section 8 benefits to buy your own home? Forget what you think you know about Section 8, because I'm going to show you exactly how this program could help you achieve the dream of home ownership. Let's dive right in. There's a little known loophole called the Housing Choice Voucher Home Ownership Program that allows eligible Section 8 users to use those vouchers to buy their own home instead of just renting one. Isn't that awesome? If you qualify for the HCV Home Ownership Program, you can use those vouchers to cover at least some of the costs of your monthly home ownership expenses, including your mortgage principal, interest, property taxes, homeowners insurance, and even the cost of utilities or major repairs in some cases. Just like with the Section 8 rental program, you'll get a monthly assistance payment. It's called a housing assistance payment. The Home Ownership Program provides those payments for up to 15 years, depending on the length of your mortgage. The amount you get is based off of one of two things, and as usual, they're going to pick whichever one is lower. It'll either be the standard payment set by the program, or your actual home ownership costs minus what you're expected to contribute. That money will usually be sent directly to your lender, but if the amount they pay is more than what you owe, the extra money could be sent back to you. This is incredible because it allows low-income renters to become homeowners. Instead of throwing your money away on rent every month, you can build equity in a home that you own. Instead of worrying about constant rent increases, you can enjoy stable and predictable payments. Instead of worrying about being forced to move, you can enjoy stability and security in one home long term. You may also be eligible for tax deductions and other benefits. There are so many advantages to using this program to buy your own place. Now it all sounds pretty great, right? That's the good news. The bad news is that this is another one of those tricky federal programs that can vary wildly depending on where you live. The Section 8 program is administered by local organizations called Public Housing Authorities, or PHAs. These are the local organizations that administer housing programs like Public Housing, Section 8, and others. There are over 3,000 different PHAs around the United States, and each one does things a little differently. There are PHAs with homeownership programs in almost every single state, but not every PHA allows you to buy a house with Section 8 vouchers. We'll talk more about that a little later. For now, let's jump into what it takes to qualify for this program, because it does have some strict requirements. The first one is pretty obvious. You need to be eligible to receive a Section 8 housing voucher in order to use one to buy a house. Some PHAs will allow you to use the homeownership program as soon as you get off the wait list, but others may require you to rent for a while first. It just depends on your local PHA's rules. The second one is a little trickier. You need to be considered a first-time homeowner or qualify for an exception. Now, if you have already owned your home, don't panic. These programs define a first-time homeowner as someone who has not had an ownership interest in a residential property for at least three years. If it's been more than 36 months since you owned your own home, you could still qualify under this rule. If you have a family member who has a disability that needs a special accommodation you can't get in a rental, you may be able to use the homeownership program even if you did own your own home in the last 36 months. That's because the program typically allows people with disabilities to request a reasonable accommodation to use their voucher to buy a house. The third requirement is income requirements, and this one is also a little bit tricky. You need to have an income low enough to qualify for Section 8, but also high enough to meet the HCV Homeownership Program requirements. There are different rules depending on whether or not you have a family member with a disability. If you don't, then you need to have an annual household income that is more than the federal minimum wage multiplied by 2,000 hours. That's around $14,500 a year right now. Now, if either you or your spouse has a disability, the rules are a little bit different. You just need to have a household income that is at least 12 times the current SSI benefit for a single person. That's around $11,316 a year right now. Now remember, these are just the income requirements to be able to use a Section 8 voucher to buy a house. You still have to be able to qualify for a mortgage with a participating lender, and they may require you to make more money than that. Now along with income, there are also rules about employment. 
If you or your spouse are disabled or elderly, these rules do not apply to you. For everyone else, though, you need to have at least one adult in the household that has been working 30 hours a week or more for at least one continuous year prior to purchasing the home. If you can pass all those steps, then you still need to participate in special homeownership counseling. The HCV program requires that you attend a counseling program that is administered by someone who is HUD certified. Your local PHA can point you in the right direction for that when it's time. And speaking of your local PHA, each one is allowed to create additional rules beyond the ones we just talked about. Because we have viewers all over the United States, I chose to base the information on this video in the same information that can be found in the Federal HUD HCV Homeownership Guidebook. That means that these are the rules that apply generally nationwide. However, HUD does allow PHAs to add additional rules and requirements. For example, many will require you to be at the end of your lease or renting on a month-to-month -month basis so that you will be able to move out of your rental and into the home you buy without any penalties. Now, if you meet these requirements, then it's time to talk to your local public housing authority. You can find their contact information by completing a search on the HUD website at hud.gov. Remember to ask them specifically about the HCV Homeownership Program. That's the name of the program that lets you buy a house with Section 8 vouchers. Now, if you aren't already on the Section 8 waitlist, you will probably have to get on the waitlist, or worse, wait for that list to reopen again. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. That waitlist can take years to get through, and it's not always open to new applicants. But if this lets you buy your own house, it's probably worth the wait. Anyway, once the PHA gives you the green light to move ahead, the process is pretty straightforward. You'll have to attend that homeownership counseling course and apply for a loan with a lender who works with the HCV program. They should be able to help you connect with a participating lender. Of course, if you need to improve your credit before you can buy a house, make sure to check out our other video about how my family went from homeless to homeowners in just 18 months. And if you need to settle some old debts first, I highly recommend checking out our sponsor solo suit because they may be able to help you settle those things. Visit lirlink.com slash solo suit for more information. Now, once you've got pre-approval for a loan, you have to find the right house. To qualify, your family needs to be able to occupy the entire home. So you'll need to look for single family homes, condominiums, or mobile homes that are permanently installed on land that will be included in the purchase. This is where it gets a little tricky. Remember how Section 8 has to inspect and improve rental homes before you can rent them? They have to do that same thing with the home you buy as well. There are definitely some extra steps when you're buying a house with Section 8 because the property will have to go through two inspections, a regular home inspection and a special one conducted by the PHA inspector. And that's not all. You also have to choose a home that is located in the PHA's jurisdiction. If you buy a house that's too far away, it may be in an address covered by a different PHA altogether. And if that happens, you may be able to use the portability clause to buy it anyway, but it just makes the process a lot more complicated. The good news is that many PHAs cover a large geographical area, so hopefully that's not a problem you'll have to deal with. It is important to look quickly though, because the PHA will usually give you a certain amount of time to find a qualifying home. If it takes too long, you may be placed back on the waiting list or given the chance to rent with Section 8 instead. But once you do find the right house, the process works very similarly to a regular mortgage. You'll make an offer using a special addendum that the PHA will give you. You'll go through the process of inspections and appraisals and whatnot that all homeowners usually have to go through. But even after closing, there are some extra steps you'll have to follow. You will have to go through regular re-examinations with the PHA to make sure that you're getting the correct amount in your housing assistance payment. The good news is that HUD promises the amount will never go down during the 10 to 15 years that you receive those payments, but it can go up depending on different factors like your family size and changes to the program. So if you'd like to get started on this, you can contact your local public housing authority and ask about the HCV homeownership program in your area. You can also find more information by reading the 83-page Housing Choice Voucher Homeownership Guidebook, but it is a bit tedious because it's written for PHAs and not regular people who just want to get some help. Don't forget to check out our other video about seven bills you don't have to pay when you're poor for more ways to save money and get free stuff. I'll see you there.